Many empires rose and fell in the Central Asian steppe, a vast expanse of grassy flatland stretching from the edges of Europe to the heart of China. Though humans have lived here for millennia, the earliest known civilization in the area were the mysterious nomadic Scythians, who lived at around 900 BC, with a reputation for being fierce horseback riders. Nomadic tribes, loosely connected by ancestry and Turkic linguistic roots, developed over the centuries. Around 300 or 400 AD, Attila the Hun emerged from the east, devastating those in his path pushing west towards the Roman Empire. Turkic tribal culture fused with Islam during the Arab invasions of the 8th and 9th centuries, profoundly altering civilization in Central Asia moving forward. Genghis Khan and the Mongols conquered much of the Central Asian steppe in the 1200s, turning the Central Asian tribes into the Uzbek Khanate, part of the Golden Horde. In 1465, 200,000 rebels split from the Uzbek Khanate, distinct enough that they would be considered their own nationality, called the Kazakhs. They seized land northeast of the Caspian Sea, and by the end of the 1500s had grown so large that they split into three major groups, the Great Horde, the Middle Horde, and the Lesser Horde. A Mongol group to the east, called the Zungars, frequently attacked the Kazakhs throughout the 1600s. The three hordes reunited and retaliated against the Zungar aggression, reclaiming contested land, and renewing Kazakh ethnic solidarity. Victory was short-lived, however. The Zangars rallied and counterattacked, devastating the Kazakhs and forcing a great retreat west. The Kazakhs, out of desperation, turned to their northern neighbors, the Russians, for help. The Lesser Horde was the first to form an alliance with Russia in the year 1730 for protection against the Zangars. But even after the Zangars were wiped out by the Qing Dynasty a few decades later, Russia still strengthened its grip on the Kazakhs. By 1820, the Middle Horde and the Great Horde were also controlled by Russia. Russian people emigrated in droves to build farms and forts, diminishing the land nomadic Kazakhs had to drive their flocks and herds. Kazakhs tried to fight Russian settlement, but they were simply not powerful enough. By the early 1900s, with over half a million Russian farmers living in Kazakh land, traditional way of life had all but been destroyed. During the First World War, Kazakhs refused to comply with the military draft, leading to a brutal crackdown from Russian authorities. The Kazakhs took advantage of the chaos during the Bolshevik Revolution and declared themselves a self-governing region called Alash Orda. But once the communists were in power, the Russians regained control. The Kazakh Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic was declared in 1925, and Stalin's collectivization policies started to become enforced. In defiance, livestock was slaughtered by angry peasants, and the ensuing famine killed 1.5 million Kazakhs. More Russians moved into the Kazakh Republic during the second half of the 20th century to work, and by the 1970s the Kazakhs were a minority. The Soviets also facilitated over environmental damage. The northern region of Semipalantinsk was used for nuclear testing, at least 1.5 million nearby people experienced health problems from radiation. Additionally, the Aral Sea, which was once the fourth largest lake in the world, dried up completely due to a failed damming project in what was one of the worst human-caused environmental disasters in history. Republics were granted more autonomy in the dying days of the USSR, but they proved ill-suited to self-sufficiency due to their economic interdependence. Kazakhstan became independent on December 16, 1991. The Soviet-appointed party leader, Nursultan Nazarbayev, remained president. A steep economic depression crippled the former Soviet states during the 1990s, but Nazarbayev fixed the situation over time by seizing control over the country's immense natural resources. In foreign policy, Nazarbayev played his cards carefully, remaining friendly with the superpowers around him, as well as ones further away. Kazakhstan's relationship with Russia remained closely tied. Most ethnic Russians moved back home after independence, making the Kazakhs a majority in their country once more. Relations with China warmed as well. Kazakhstan is a part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, and the two countries recently completed a natural gas pipeline project. Over time, Nazarbayev proceeded to systematically eliminate his opposition, intimidate the press, and stage elections, making himself Kazakhstan's permanent president. Anti-government protests in 2019 
accelerated President Nazarbayev's planned retirement shortly before the 30-year mark of his rule. His chosen successor, Kasim Yomart Tokayev, won the snap presidential election, which was declared fraudulent by international observers, with Nazarbayev still maintaining some control behind the scenes. Rebellious sentiment calmed dramatically during the COVID-19 pandemic, however, and the current regime is unlikely to lose power anytime soon.